The Lord be with you. We're so happy to hear God's word on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Last week we heard Jesus telling, preparing his disciples, including you and me, about the persecution that we will face because uh, of speaking the truth of God's word in the world. Today Jesus goes on to explain that even the members of our own household may be against us, and yet we don't have to be afraid to confess Jesus and to speak the truth because Jesus says, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And we never have to be afraid to speak the truth and to confess Jesus Christ in our lives, even though we will be rejected by others. Know the cost of discipleship, and yet know that it's also worth it too because our Lord Jesus Christ gives us his love, gives us his strength and protection, and gives us eternal life because he died on the cross for us. Let's begin now with our opening hymn, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Because we cannot free ourselves from, from our sinful condition and have sinned in thought, word, and deed, let us employ the faith the Holy Spirit has given us and go to our gracious Heavenly Father, asking his forgiveness for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God has given his only son to bear the punishment for our, for our sins on the cross so that we might know the peace of his presence now and the joys of heaven hereafter. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who exult in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost is written in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from, from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the gradual for these Sundays after Pentecost. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. On your wondrous works I will meditate, and I will declare your greatness. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Roman Christians, the seventh chapter. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, 
that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in a new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join all together in the verse of the day. Hallelujah. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, truly, I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever noticed how popular it is nowadays to buy goods or services in bundles? You can save money by bundling your TV and internet and phone services all from the same company for one low price or so they claim. I usually go for the bundle at fast food restaurants, you know, the value meal. I, a lot of times, I might already have a beverage in my car that I brought from home that's maybe even mostly full, but the restaurant offers everything. Your sandwich, your uh, fries, a drink to go with it, and it's cheaper than buying the items individually. So I may get the meal deal and take the drink even though I really don't need it because, well, it's practically free with the meal anyway. But then other times I don't want the things bundled in the meal deal. Maybe I, I don't always want french fries. So skipping the fries and the drink might only save me, you know, 50 cents or 75 cents or something like that. I don't know, but why pay even 75 cents for items that I don't want? And so that's why I like ordering from a dollar menu or something like that. I can just pick and choose the items that I, that I want and not have to pay for things that I don't want. Have you ever gotten some sort of bundle or package deal so that you could get one item and it came with other items that you didn't care about? Maybe things that you even threw away or gave away just so you could have the one item you did want. Well, in today's gospel reading, Jesus is 
teaching us that being his follower is getting a bundle deal. But it's no bargain. And this is one of those bundles where the only way you get what you really need is to get it bundled with some things that you definitely don't want. But with Jesus, there is no picking and choosing individual items. It's all or nothing. That's the deal. Non-negotiable. So what's, what's the deal Jesus is offering us? Well, in our Matthew 10 reading for today, Jesus starts out with the whole truth without pulling any punches. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now, I would never try to think that I'm smarter than the Lord, but my advice to Jesus would be here, Lord, this is not a very good marketing technique. If you want people to follow you, Lord, you don't start off presenting your package deal with something negative like a sword. I mean, think about it. Jesus would not be a very good salesman because it sounds like he's starting out his appeal saying, now don't think that you're getting a bargain here. This is no bargain. It's a major pain. I guess that really illustrates the idea of truth in advertising, doesn't it? But think about what this means for you and me. As followers of Jesus, we're going to get one thing we're going to get in this bundle deal that Jesus is offering us is a sword, which represents conflict. As soon as you start following Jesus, even the members of your own family or household may be in conflict with you. Now remember, this is a bundle deal. And the first thing you get in this bundle is Jesus himself. All of him and all the rights and privileges that belong to Jesus. That's a good deal. No matter what else comes in the bundle, no matter what you don't want in there, having Jesus is worth it. And believe me, Jesus is a priceless treasure. And all the rights and privileges that come with Jesus are beyond anything that this world has to offer. So no matter what other things are offered in this bundle deal that you don't want, having Jesus is worth it. And there's no other way to get him. But as Jesus strongly urges us, don't think you're getting a great bargain because the other item packaged along with Jesus in this deal is a sword. But when you have Jesus, automatically, instantly, no ifs, ands, or buts, you are going to be at odds with this world. And yes, even the members of your own family a lot of times. But Jesus offers himself in this bundle deal. He says, take me above all else, above everything in this world, above everything in your life. Take all of me and give me all of yourself. It's the most expensive bundle deal of all time because it's going to cost you your very self. It's going to cost you your whole life. But what you have to gain is so much more than yourself or your life. You gain Christ in his life. Now Jesus, the honest deal maker, wants to be absolutely sure about the deal, that you understand the deal that he's offering. So he states it again, two more times in different ways. In verse 38, he says, Whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. The cross 
means the same thing as the sword. It means that there is suffering involved. Following Jesus is not going to be a pleasant thing. It involves bearing Christ's burdens along with him, the burden of a cross, so that Christ's burden becomes our burden. It means going wherever he leads us, even if we don't want to go there. We don't get to choose. Following Jesus means going where he goes. And he warns us ahead of time, it's not going to be an easy road. And I can guarantee that along the way, you are going to stumble and fall. It sounds pretty rough, doesn't it? This business of following Jesus. But here is the great and wonderful part of the deal. We've got Jesus. He's with us. So yes, we'll have some very large seemingly unbearable burdens to carry as we take up our cross and follow Jesus. But we have Jesus. We have his strength. We can't even imagine being able to bear the burdens of this life on our own. But with Jesus' strength, the strength that he gives to us, his yoke, his burden is easy. His burden is light. When we trust in him, when we follow him, when we take up our cross of burden, that is all the daily tasks, the, the things that he calls us to do in our everyday lives. It's amazing to us to find out that Jesus is right. With his strength, there is no heavy burden. As for the dark and difficult road that he leads us on through this life, we have Christ. The darkness becomes light. The difficult road becomes easy because we have Christ giving us the light, giving us the strength and the power and the peace that we need to go where he leads, even if it's right through the valley of the shadow of death. When you have Jesus, he's such a wonderful and powerful gift that anything else, a sword, a cross, whatever burden, whatever suffering that comes in this package deal, anything else is worth accepting so that we can have the great blessing of Jesus our Lord and Savior. St. Paul said, I count everything in this world as loss as long as I have Jesus Christ, he is my gain. And so Jesus calls you to follow him. In loving that annoying person who nobody else wants to be around, it seems like too great of a burden to bear to love that person. But Jesus gives you all the love and the patience you'll need. Jesus calls you to give up honor and fame and fortune in the eyes of the world to give yourself in humble service instead to make Christ the most important priority in your life even above what other people might think of you the Lord challenges you to, to put yourself out there to put yourself at risk risk of being hurt by others, risk of being ridiculed, risk of being seen as weak or foolish, to give up your own rights and privileges with others, to let them slap you on the cheek or to take your cloak so that you can show his love and forgiveness. There are many, many more unpleasant things that are all part of the cross that he calls you to bear. They're part of the bundle deal that go along with having Jesus. And all of these earthly difficulties would seem like too great of a price to pay 
why would I give up my own life or my rights or the things that I would desire? But then we look at what Jesus paid to rescue and purchase you and me to be his own. He gave his very life. He gave everything. He invested himself, his life, for eternity. The biggest price that could ever be paid. All so that he could have you and me as his priceless treasure. Jesus knew what kind of deal he was getting. He knew that you were also bundled with sin, with failures, with all kinds of baggage and junk in your life, even death. And Jesus took that package deal so that he could have you, so that he could have you as his priceless treasure. And so he gave his life to have you as his own. It was the most expensive deal of a lifetime for Jesus. But he paid the price. He made the investment because he loves you that much. And now he asks you to make the same investment. And just like it did for Jesus, it is going to cost you everything. But in return, you will gain everything and so much more than everything. I tell you the truth, every day you're going to discover new benefits to having Jesus until, until the day you die. And when he comes to bring you to heaven, to his wonderful home that he's prepared for you, you'll understand what a great deal this bundle called Christianity really was. It may not look very pleasant right now to follow Jesus, and you might not see much benefit right away. But the benefits can't, can't be seen with these earthly eyes. Christ promises though, you, though, that in the end you will see. A package deal, a bundle deal, and it's no bargain. It's going to cost you everything. Christ and a sword. Christ and a cross. Christ and suffering. You can't have one without the other. But when you have Jesus, nothing else can compare. Nothing else can diminish the priceless treasure that you have in Jesus. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all that we can understand, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join with all Christians everywhere in confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we pray as Christ our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor 
and give you peace. Amen.